Hey, Critical Analysis, this is your video for week two, which is running from January 25th through January 31st. Hopefully week one, you were able to start getting more comfortable with the navigation of Blackboard. Just a quick reminder, when you log in, you're always back to the Start Here page. That introduction video, I'll leave on there for a little while longer in case you need to revisit any of the features. Of course, you have your syllabus, and then you want to pay attention to the fact that your textbook link is right here, and we are actually going to use your textbook a little bit today in this video. So that is where you will access your textbook. A couple reminders as well. If you have any questions, feel free to message me in the course messages. Anytime I post an announcement regarding the class, I will also send as a course message. Your course calendar every week when it opens, you will see the assignments that are due that week inside the course calendar, as well as in your syllabus and the announcements and the videos. And then keep track of your grades. Um, I know week one and week two in particular are very light in terms of assignments, but you'll notice uh, in the coming weeks, You'll have multiple assignments due each week, and so you just want to keep on top of that and make sure that you have everything submitted that you should. Under the content tab, I'm recording this in week one, which is why you still see week one there, but I will eventually be uploading the lab's mastery skill assessment videos. We are not quite there yet, but those will be available in the coming weeks, and I'll let you know about that as well. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down to week two, and you can see it's titled Language of College because we're not fully in chapter one yet. We're going to dabble in it, but we're not quite there. So this is still kind of a continuation of the introduction to the course. And so I'm going to go ahead and click in the materials folder, and you'll see that there are two files and materials you're going to use to help you complete this week. So if you open both of those, you're going to get the Language of College essay, which is the subject of this video. The Language of College, it's a seven paragraph essay, if you will, that'll be the basis of today's reading. It'll also contain 10 vocabulary terms that we will be plugging into this vocabulary guide. So every chapter you will get a vocabulary study guide. This is the only chapter where some of the words are coming from something other than our text. Every other chapter, 2 through 10, all 20 of the words will be from the chapter itself. This is the only chapter where 10 come from the chapter and then 10 come from the language of college. So we will be using that to complete this week as well. So I'm going to also go ahead and go back here and get into the assignment folder. And based on your syllabus and even in here, you can see that you really only have one assignment this week, and it's the discussion board, which I'll get to here in a few minutes, because we're going to use the text and skill practice for chapter one today, but we are not submitting it quite yet. That's why there's no Dropbox here for you. So it's more of a material, but I wanted to put it in the assignment just to let you know that it is something that eventually you are going to have to submit. So when you open that, it'll pop up and look like this, and you're actually only going to be submitting, or excuse me, working on Roman numeral two down here, and that is indicated in your syllabus. So those are all the materials that you're going to use. I also have our textbook up and going in the background because we are going to refer to that here shortly. So the first thing we're actually going to do is go ahead and pull up your chapter one text and skill practice. So every single chapter has what's called the text and skill practice. On your syllabus, I start to abbreviate it as TSP. And as I mentioned, you will not be submitting this one this week. This one is not due until week three, which ends February 7th, but we are going to start it today in particular this part down here. Now chapter one talks about the reading process and the fact that there are three stages to the reading process before you read, while you read, and after you read. So you don't want to just jump into reading. You want to take some steps and go through some, some procedures, if you will, to kind of help increase your comprehension. So we are going to look at this section before we even fully read the language of college. So if you, however you prefer to do this, some people like to print this off and write on it and then type their answers. Some people like to type in it right away. It's really up to you how you like to navigate the online course and that kind of part of being online. So before we, or rather you, read the article, you're going to answer Roman numeral two, A, one, it just four parts before reading the article. What do you predict this essay is about? How many paragraph long is it? Why was it written? And what do you notice about some words or phrases? So this is where I would kind of suggest maybe pausing 
the video and just taking 30 seconds to just do what we kind of said preview. Look and see how many paragraphs, what's the purpose, why do you think it was written, what do you notice about those words uh, throughout. Okay, so again, I would recommend maybe pausing and coming back to the video here after you were able to answer those questions. Okay, hopefully you paused or you answered those questions. Now, number two says while reading this essay. It says use at least two of the five strategies recommended on page 13 in your text. So that's why I already have the textbook up and going back here. And I will do like an overview of the text when we start chapter one. We're only using a little bit of chapter one today. So I just went down here to the bottom and I typed in, you know, page 13. And it takes you right to where you need to be. I know it changes the number down here. It's because it kind of aligns it differently with the online text. So it says, choose two of the five strategies. Well, we are going to focus on while reading. Remember I said that reading is a process. There are things you want to do before, while, and after you read, which we will go into more depth with the chapter one video next week. So here are the five strategies that is referring to. Guess vocabulary from context, meaning... Are you able to look to see the words or the phrases around an unfamiliar word to see how they're being used? Make annotations. So in the marginal notes, are you able to kind of jot down some main points, jot down a question or some main concepts? Highlighting key terms and ideas. So not highlighting everything, but just the most important things from maybe each paragraph. Formulate some questions for reflection. So think about, okay, I just read this. What else do I need to think about? Um, what else could I apply to this? What, how do I connect to this? And then predict what is coming next. So that's the strategies that this question right here is referring. While reading each paragraph, use at least two of the five strategies recommended on page 13, then answer these questions. So what strategies did you choose? How did this affect your reading speed? Okay, so... Again, I will encourage you to go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and do a reading of this language of college. You would have already hopefully previewed it already. Now you're going to go ahead and read the language of college. And the article is just what it sounds like. It's going to refer back to common vernacular, common phrases and words that are used in an academic environment. Some of these are going to be very familiar. I've already thrown around the word syllabus multiple times, so you're probably already used to that word even before coming to college. But there might be a couple words or phrases in here that you're not quite as familiar with. And sometimes when you get to college, people assume that you know what a prerequisite is. They assume you know what it means to default, what a degree evaluation is, and you may not. And so that's what the purpose of this article is for you. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and I said, I'm going to encourage you to pause and read that article answering these two questions while you read it. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and you were able to read the article and answer those two questions. Now you'll see that there are two questions down here, larger questions, that now have to do with after you've read. So I'm hopefully assuming you've read the article. So this is the after part. When you're done reading, and we're going to talk about this again more in chapter one when we get fully into it next week. When you're done reading, you should spend some time summarizing, um, answering questions, thinking about what you've read, reviewing your notes. So question three says, after reading the language of college, just answer these questions. In order to succeed, what must a student understand? So you want to pull down, like, what was there, what do they talk about maybe in particular, or maybe just in general? What should you understand as a college student? And then what people and services are mentioned in this article can help you succeed. So they do mention a couple different people in general and services. So maybe pull one of those out and talk about how they could help you. And then question four says, you know, the reading process, which I've alluded to before you read, while you read after you read, is designed to help you be a more successful reader. But it actually can take you longer to read because if you're spending time previewing and then you're spending time, you know, anticipating what's next and looking up vocabulary and taking notes and annotating, obviously it's going to take you a little bit longer. Why is it still worth doing? So once you think about why would it be worthwhile to spend more time 
reviewing and taking notes and rereading and summarizing and doing all those things, why is it still worthwhile? And how do you think in the long run, will that actually save you time? And I'll give you a hint. If you've ever read something and you just like jumped in, you didn't really read it deeply. You just kind of like glazed over it and checked it off your to-do list. But then like a week later, you had to reread it because you forgot it and you need it for a certain purpose. How is really investing time on day one of the reading going to save you time in the long run? Okay, so that is what you are doing for this video. You are completing part Roman numeral two, and you'll see part A, one, two, three, four. Again, you're not submitting this yet, so I would encourage you to do this, save it in a file somewhere because you will finish it and submit it with next week's video. And again, all of that refers to this language of college essay. Now the second part of your materials is your study guide that goes along with the language of college. I already highlighted those words. They weren't naturally highlighted when you pulled that up. Um, I highlighted them because if you scroll to the bottom in your syllabus, it says for this week you are filling in the back side of chapter one vocabulary. Now your vocabulary quiz over chapter one, which includes these words, will be due in week three on February 7th. So I'm just gonna go through, and as I said, I already highlighted them in the essay itself, and I already filled this out for you. So you are welcome to kind of listen, type on your own, fill it out, whatever you would like to do that's going to be helpful to you. So, and I already marked down the paragraph number. In paragraph two, we saw the word syllabus, which a syllabus is just a course outline or overview. Every class you've taken, whether it's your first semester and, or fifth semester, should have supplied you with a syllabus. And it basically just gives you an overview of the course. It tells you how you're going to get your grades, it tells you the calendar, the expectations, your assignments, so it just gives you that nice overview. We saw the word degree evaluation in paragraph seven. And this is, let's say you think you're going to graduate in a spring semester. So in the fall, the semester before, you have to go and sit with your advisor. And what they do is they literally evaluate if you're ready to get your degree. So it's, I kind of like to think of it that way. It makes it more sensible. So it just makes sure, you know, did you take all the credits? Do you have the GPA that you need? Did you, you know, take all the licensure exams? So anything along that nature is what that degree evaluation is going to do. Default in paragraph five means to not pay back loans in a timely way. So maybe your payments are $100 a month and you only pay $5 a month. You could eventually default or maybe you don't pay anything at all. So you don't want to default. It's going to hurt your credit score. It's going to hurt your ability to take out loans in the future. Developmental in paragraph three means to progress or change or advance. So if you have to take a developmental course on campus, which critical analysis is considered a developmental course, as well as some of your math courses and English courses, it just simply means it's a course designed to help you advance in that particular area. Prerequisite in paragraph one, pre, the prefix pre means before. So of course you have to take before moving into a future course. This class is a prerequisite for let's say psychology, sociology, many different classes. And that's why you'll also see this class is labeled as a 102. Uh, you'll also see classes that are 200 level. So you often have prerequisites for those classes. Accommodation in paragraph six just means academic assistance. So if you had an IEP or a 504 in high school, you would probably qualify for an accommodation in college. And that could look like maybe someone who is a note taker. Maybe you need an extended time to take tests or quizzes in class. Maybe you need to go to a quiet space to take tests and quizzes. So that's what that means by academic assistance. And you have to qualify for those accommodations. Disqualified in paragraph five means to no longer be eligible. So if you were, um, the example in the essay was that if you were caught you know, selling drugs, you would no longer be eligible or you would be disqualified for federal financial aid. Commencement in paragraph seven is just a fancy word for graduation. They call that the commencement ceremony. What you're doing is you're graduating. Uh, commencement itself literally means to begin because you are beginning a new stage of your life. Certificate in paragraph four is like a career enhancement. So the benefit of a certificate is that, first of all, it's 
shorter time period. So you may be working on a certificate for one or two semesters versus if you're working on a, a degree, you might be here for four or five, six semesters. So that's kind of the appeal, which obviously then means it's less expensive because you're here last time. You don't have to take as many classes. So you might already be in a field where they just want you to brush up or learn a new skill. So you go back and get a certificate or it could be like an add on. So you're getting a degree, but you also want a certificate to make you a little bit more employable or some people take multiple certificates and then eventually it builds to a degree. And then transcript in paragraph seven is kind of your official grade report at the college level. I like to think of it as like your report card, but for college. So it goes over every class you took, the grades you earned in that course, as well as the credits that you eventually earned. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that you have those words understood. Next week will be filling out the rest of that vocabulary study guide. Okay, so getting back into our Blackboard course. Again, since you are not submitting that chapter one text and skill practice, you are only filling out the one part we discussed. The only thing that is actually going to be graded and due this week is your discussion post. So you're welcome to week two discussion post. Reminder, you click. When you hit create thread, it'll pop up the prompt again. And there it is. So in this form, post one area in which you believe is a strength while attending college. So that means like, are you motivated? Do you have great time management skills? Do you have good computer skills? Whatever that might be. One area you need to improve, you know, is your note taking lacking? Are you kind of wavering in dedication or motivation? What about your attendance if you're taking online, uh, excuse me, face-to-face -face classes? And then one question you have about Stark State specifically, or maybe just college in general. And that's what you'll post in here. Now that we're back to a typical week where the week opened on Monday, attendance is firmly due on Wednesday nights. So please make sure you post your response by Wednesday for week two attendance. If you post later, you will still get the forum points, but you will not get full attendance points. So just make sure that you're posting on time since we are all online. That is my way of making sure that you're staying engaged and up with everything with the class. Okay, I think that is everything for this week. If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know and hope you all have a great week to the semester.